This week on Maker Update, a book actuated lamp, big caliber energy, reviving old power banks, injection molding, spaceship paneling, and how to debounce your circuits. Hello and welcome back to Maker Update. I'm Tyler Weingartner and I hope you're finding a lot of great ways to stay creative and inspired. If you need a little boost, you've come to the right place. I find that having a few limitations can really inspire a lot of creative solutions in my work, and that's exactly what our project of the week is all about. Let's check it out. We're almost two years into the pandemic, and while we're starting to get good at it, we can still get caught out. That's exactly what happened to Laura Kampf, and she was forced to quarantine herself in New York after she tested positive for COVID. And while I'm sure that's still plenty frightening, her quarantine location might be the best place for creative isolation, the vacation home of Tom Sachs. And there's a workshop in the basement. Yeah. Every project is born from a problem, and it's usually a very specific or personal one. That's exactly what this is. Laura wants to build a lamp that simplifies turning it off when reading in bed before going to sleep. Since trying to find a bookmark and setting the book down and switching off the lamp might be enough activity to wake you up again. The challenge is to make this lamp not just using the tools in Tom's workshop, but also the materials, since she can't go out to acquire more. The result is a lamp with a shade that can act as a bookmark, but when you rest the book on it, it switches the lamp off. Not only is it a clever design made entirely out of the materials she had on hand, but there's some fascinating use of materials too. Who would have thought to make a lampshade out of cardboard that's been reinforced with fiberglass and resin? Not me, that's for sure. What I love about this project is that even though he wasn't there for the build, the lamp still looks like a Tom Sachs project. I don't know if that was intentional on Laura's part, or a byproduct of the tools and materials she had on hand. Either way, there's a lot to think about with a project like this. How often do you go into your workshop to build something specific and just use the materials you have and nothing else? It's a useful constraint to work with sometimes. The other great news is that Laura's COVID symptoms were very mild and she was feeling well the whole time in quarantine. And she's already been able to fly back home to Germany. More projects. One of the best ways to challenge yourself as a maker is to remake something familiar, but at a completely different scale. That's the idea behind this workshop clock by Fantasy Forge. It looks like a giant pair of digital calipers with a digital clock where the readout would normally be. The electronic body of the calipers is a massive 3D printed enclosure for the clock. What really impressed me is how the scale and the jaws were built. They're all made of plywood and MDF, but have been shaped and finished to look like polished metal. There's a lot of skill for finishing MDF at work here, so if you've struggled with that in the past, give this one a look. Traditionally speaking, injection molding machines tend to live in the realm of professional manufacturing and out of the reach of hobbyists. The folks at Action Box weren't having any of that, so they built their own desktop injection molding machine. And after seeing what goes into a machine like this and how it was built, it looks a lot more accessible than I thought. The most specialized part here is the plunger that they turned down on a lathe. Everything else here is just some aluminum bar stock, some brackets, and these massive pneumatic plungers. Some heating elements melt on the plastic pellets so it can be injected, and a thermocouple reports the current temperature. Sure, you still need to machine your own molds, but the rest of this looks pretty attainable, even in a modest shop. Over on Instructables, I found this great project by Lone Soul Surfer on how to give dead power banks some new life. What he found was that most of the time, it was the electronics in the power bank that failed, not the battery. Replacing the USB charging circuit is easy enough, but he also added a voltage regulator and a pair of terminals so he can use it to power his electronics projects. Not only has he saved a piece of electronics from the landfill, but he's also made it a lot more useful. And on Hackaday, I found this awesome project by Nuri Enganage for a Bluetooth foot switch as a computer interface. 
If you find yourself constantly hitting the same key over and over again in the computer work you do, a foot switch might be just the thing you need. The design is 3D printed, integrating a spring style hinge. There's a charging circuit for an 18650 battery, and the pedal connects to your computer wirelessly over Bluetooth. It's a great design and might just free up your hands from repetitive tasks. Time for some tips and tools. On Tested, Adam Savage is going back to his roots to share an extensive video about his process of panelizing a spaceship model. If you've never worked with styrene before, this video acts as an excellent primer on how to cut, shape, and glue this versatile material. But then you get to see how he uses the panels to creatively form and stylize the wing, and that's before adding the greeblies. It's a fun watch, and I love this tip of having the bottom of a soda can glued to a piece of wood. I can't tell you how many times I've needed a shallow container for glue or paint or solvent, and this seems like the perfect solution. The Volt Log has released a video offering their impressions of KiCad 6. KiCad 6 was released about a month ago, and by the video, it looks like there's been some significant changes made to the schematic interface. There's a new plugin and content manager. There's an improved 3D viewer with faster render times and a whole lot more. If you've been a KiCad user for a while and you're not sure if it's worth it to upgrade, give this video a look. One of David Picciuto's latest videos shows the part of making that almost no one ever talks about, the design phase. In the video, he's designing a cabinet for his audio gear, but he needs it to fit not only the equipment he wants to store in there, but it also needs to fit in the space he's planned for it. Most of the video is him sketching out the cabinet with how he plans to build it and determining how many sheets of plywood he'll need. This is probably something that everybody does differently, but it's always fascinating to see how other folks tackle common problems. On Twitter, I found this short video from 84 Moda about a set of digital calipers they've modified to input the measurements directly into Fusion 360. Most digital calipers have a data port that allows them to interface with other hardware, and it looks like that's in play here. On the back of the caliper, there's an Arduino Pro Micro and a few components handling the translation. There's not a whole lot to go on other than a video and a few photos. So hopefully 84 Moda will share some of their code in the future. In the meantime, it just looks super satisfying to see them measure an object and see those measurements just snap into the software. For this week's Ditch Key Spotlight, they've got a new video about switch bounce. Switch bounce is a lot less fun than it sounds, and it can cause a lot of headaches when debugging a circuit. There's two popular ways of debouncing a component, in software and in hardware. This video discusses the pros and the cons of each method, how to design a hardware solution for debouncing, and why you want to avoid switch bounce in the first place. All right, and that is gonna do it for this week's show. I hope you enjoyed it. I'd love to hear about any projects you've made that were entirely out of materials you already had on hand. If you have a story like that, let us know down in the comments. Otherwise, give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed the show and sign up for the Maker Update email list if you want to get the show delivered right to your front door instead of hoping it turns up in your YouTube feed. Big thanks to the folks at DigiKey and to you for watching. Take care. I'll see you soon.